Okay, let's resume our discussion um, and try to create single particle states in an interacting quantum field theory. Um, we have already talked about this a little uh, while ago in this previous video and the goal is to now find equivalent or f find a way so that I can create this um, single particle states of a uh, definite momentum k and we are in search of an operator equivalent to that of this a dagger in free theory which when I act with on the vacuum gives me a state of this kind okay I'm sorry there are two cats which are making a lot of noise it might get captured in the audio but there's nothing I can do about it because they are not in my in my house. Um, okay, before that, before we proceed, um, I noticed that last time here I had written d cube k over two omega p. Okay, so I've corrected it to k. Of course, it cannot be p here. When you use the delta function, the p will be. I mean, you have either p or k. You cannot have a mixture of this. So it, uh, it's it should be this. Okay, so let's go back to creating single particle states. So how should we proceed? Um, so um, let's go to free theory, and I go to free theory because the the interacting theory is going to behave as a free theory as far as these particle interaction particles are concerned in distant past okay because when you take t time going to minus infinity um, all these particles are located far away from each other and they do not interact with each other okay so i, I should be working in that limit and try to find out uh, field phi in that limit what um, uh, that field will be in that limit or equivalently I try to construct an a dagger in that limit which will behave as um, free field operators okay so that's roughly what we want to do so let's get our inspiration from uh, free field theory so in free theory We have, you can show this, so that's an exercise that a dagger of p, this is the one which when you act on vacuum gives you single particle states apart from some normalization is this. Okay, 1 over 2 omega p and then you have e to the minus i omega p t minus k dot minus p dot x and then you have this operator which I will explain what it is phi x I have been writing phi t x okay so this is an exercise which in fact I'm going to do now but let's first tell what this del naught is so suppose you have been given two functions of time f of t and g of t then this object is defined as f of t del g over del t minus del f over del t times g of t okay so that's the definition of this this thing okay so this is just a time derivative but it acts both ways so if you take this del naught with this uh, double arrow and if it is 
and, and this object this operator uh, the way it acts is it acts in an ordinary way when it is acting on the right so g of t so this is the first term so you would have got an ft times del naught gt so this is this then you have a minus sign and then in, in the second term it is acting on f okay minus del f over del t gt okay nothing nothing uh, deep here it's a simple definition of this operator okay so this is what you have to show that this is indeed true so let's uh, i want to do that algebra but let me say a few things no let's do that okay so let's recall what phi is because phi has a time dependence okay on which this del not will act and also the time dependence is here in this uh, omega t factor on which again del not will act okay so let me um, do a little bit clean up of the notation and define Okay, so this entire except for this d cube x entire the all the other things here th this part okay that i have defined as f of p uh, f t of x with the subscript p okay so that a dagger becomes minus i integral d cube x f p t of x f p t x and then you have this time derivative operator acting on both the sides okay also let me record here that if you calculate del naught of f p t x then of course differentiating this exponential will bring minus i omega p and again you get back that exponential and these factors are anyway constants so you'll get minus i omega p f p t x okay so now we need to substitute what phi is so that i can uh differentiate with respect to time because we need to act on with this del naught and try to get the result okay so let's start with the right hand side what's the right hand side right hand side is this object this which is same as this here okay where fp is defined in this equation but before i look at right hand side i should give you the expressions for phi so phi of tx is eqk 2 pi 3 halves and this vector ak to the minus i omega k t plus i k dot x okay that's in the exponent plus a dagger of k e to the i omega k t uh, 
माइनस आई के डॉट एक्स ओके एंड ऑफ कोर्स डेल नॉट फाइव विल बी इंटीग्रल डी क्यू के ओवर टू पाई थ्री हाफ Okay, this one has the a dagger comes with a plus i omega. So let me write that one first. I have pulled out the factor i here, and you have omega k. That's what you get after differentiating. Then a dagger of k. Then again the same factor e to the i omega k t minus k dot x. Okay, and this one will bring minus i. So that is here so i am left with the minus sign okay so that is fine now when you substitute these all these things in the right hand side right hand side of um this expression let's call it 1 then you will get let me write it down right hand side is equal to minus i integral d cube x this thing then you have fp del not phi f p del not phi minus del not f p phi okay that's what you get that's um that follows from the definition of this uh, del not with this double sided arrow okay so now this is minus i integral d cube x and um f p let me suppress the uh, arguments del not phi minus now del not f was minus i omega p times f so that makes a plus i omega p times f of p times phi is that fine yes okay that's good now things look a bit cleaner if i pull out f okay <coughs> now um you can substitute phi and del not phi and you will get the following i think i'm writing too big so i'll write here the expression that you will get minus i okay let me decrease the size and brush Pilot. Okay, this might be better. So it's um, the right hand side is now minus i integral d cube x. One over two pi three halves. One over two omega p e to the minus i omega p t minus p dot x. Okay, times um. 
इंटीग्रल डी क्यू के ओवर टू पाई थ्री हाफ के आई एम जस्ट सब्सिट्यूटिंग फाइव एंड डल नॉट फाइव आई ओवर टू ओमेगा के रूट टू ओमेगा के ओमेगा के ए डैगर के ई टू द माइनस आई सॉरी टू द प्लस आई ओमेगा के टी माइनस आई के डॉट एक्स माइनस राइट माइनस ओमेगा के ए के ई टू द माइनस आई ओमेगा के टी प्लस आई के डॉट एक्स दैट्स वन टर्म एंड देन द अदर टर्म इज प्लस आई ओमेगा पी इंटीग्रल डी क्यूब k over 2 pi 3 halves 1 over 2 omega k and then you have a dagger of k e to the i omega k t minus k dot x plus a of k e to the minus i omega k t plus k i k dot x okay and this square bracket closes here or maybe i should put it here okay now um we can see something here um you have an in an integral over x so you have a d cube x and the x x dependence is quite simple you have here plus i p dot x and then you have here these uh, again these factors of x sitting in the exponent okay so doing x integral is fairly easy doing p uh, k or k integral is not easy because you have k appearing in all these places omega k e dagger k in addition to the exponentials so we'll do the uh, integral over x first and of course you are going to get dirac delta function because that's what you get when you integrate um, the exponentials so let me write here um we are going to use d cube x 1 over 2 pi 3 halves that is from here okay and then you have e to the Minus i times minus is plus i p dot x. Okay, and this multiplies either this piece, which is d cube k over two three half. So I am going to collect this also. Okay, and then you have either e to the i k dot x. or you are going to get minus i k dot x okay these are the two possibilities which you have and this is so when you do the integral over k uh, sorry over x it will give you 2 pi cube which will cancel uh, sorry 2 pi cube times delta function with p plus minus k okay but the 2 pi cube will cancel these two factors of 2 3 halves so i'm going to get d cube k delta cube or delta of p minus plus k okay that's what we are going to get and that's what i'm going to substitute in this expression here so what it becomes is the following i am left with an integral over k 
times um, let me do it 2 omega k ok uh, now first we have this factor e to the minus i omega p t 1 over 2 omega p these factors of 2 pi 3 halves have been taken care of ok so let us write this one 1 over and there is a factor of minus i also here so we have minus i 1 over 2 omega p in the square root then e to the minus i omega p t that factor is taken care of all the 2 pi 3 halves have been taken care of integral over x I am going to do now and put the delta functions and what I am left with is integral over k ok so let us write integral over k in the next line integral d cube k times um, first this term and then this term. So, first is i over 2 omega k the square root then we have omega k then we have a dagger k ok then this will uh, this piece will stay here e to the i omega k t but this one when combined with this and integrated over d cube x will give you a delta cube of p minus k let us see p so that is plus p and that is minus k so that is correct that is p minus k and then you have other term minus omega k a of k e to the minus i omega k t and delta cube p plus k why p plus k because again plus p you have here and that is a plus k so delta q p plus k and then let us look at this term here that is plus i omega um, p over root 2 omega k and then these factors um, you get a dagger of k e to the i omega k t delta cube p minus k then you have plus a of k e to the minus i omega k t delta q p plus k ok now whenever you have delta function things become very easy ok so we are now going to integrate over uh, d cube k and utilize the presence of these delta functions and you can check that this is what you are going to get you will get minus i 1 over 2 omega p e to the minus i omega p t that is this first factor. So, let us see what this gives this k this delta function which will turn the k into p. So, this will be become e to the i omega p t this will become omega p this will become 1 over 2 uh, root 2 omega p ok. So, I will still keep it as i over root 2 omega p and turn all these into all these k's into p's. So, you get 
i over 2 omega p omega p a dagger p e to the i omega p t okay and i'll continue and write down the other terms also a of minus p e to the minus i omega p t so what has happened here is because this is delta q p plus k it hits when k is equal to minus p okay so it will turn all the k's into minus p so it will be omega of minus p here but omega of minus p is same as omega of p because uh, k enters quadratically in the expression of omega okay so that leaves it as omega of p but here it makes it omega of minus p okay and that is why i have put omega of p omega of p but this is omega, uh, a of minus p and similarly for the other term i will write down 1 over 2 omega p omega p a dagger p e to the i omega p t plus omega p a minus p e to the minus i omega p t that's what you get and let's see minus i omega p these two terms are identical and the signs are opposite so they cancel and it gives you finally these two add up they are also identical so they add up um, gives you a factor of 2 actually and you have 2 1 uh, so you have 1 over root 2 omega p coming from here and these two also have 1 over root 2 omega p so that makes 1 over 2 omega p okay so let me write down minus i from this one then e to the minus i omega p t this one now let's take care of these factors this will leave us with uh, i over 2 omega p then they add up factor of 2 so 2 omega p a dagger p e to the i omega p t let's see whether i got it right these two cancel i times minus i is 1 e to the minus i omega p t is cancelling e to the i omega p t gives you 1 so you have a dagger of p and that is what we set out to prove that this object um, where is it this right hand side is equal to a dagger of p okay so what we have now is an expression of the creation operator in free theory in terms of phi okay that's what we have proved okay but our goal is to go to interacting theory but this will be useful because i will uh, use it to walk along and arrive at interacting theory okay so let's um, see what we should do next okay good so our first thing should be that we define an it uh, an object just like this so this creation operator is this in terms of free field where phi is free field uh, phi okay this phi is not the phi of our interacting theory this phi is the phi for free theory okay it evolves according to the klein gordon equation this is um, free real scalar free theory but now no one stops me from looking at this object for the case of interacting theory okay so let's go and do that and hope that it will help but we know that it's not going to help directly because we are not working in free theory but nevertheless let's go ahead and write it down so i'm going to 
use uh, this definition f of p okay, and uh, this thing. So, a dagger of p is minus i integral d cube x f p del naught phi where del naught is with double arrows and I will define this and I will look at this object in interacting theory. Okay, so, now we are in interacting theory. Mm, what was that object? It was minus i integral d cube x f where this phi is the phi of interacting theory. Okay, it does not evolve according to free klein gordon equation. Okay, that does not evolve according to that. So, let us look at this and I um, leave it as an exercise to show that if you take this object and take a time derivative. Okay, the, the reason why I am asking you this is if you, okay, let us forget that. Let us take a time derivative of this object and show that this is equal to minus i integral d cube x f p Okay, then del over del t that is del naught square minus this plus m p square where m p is the physical mass of particles in this theory. So, we have assumed that the theory has single uh, uh, has um, uh, single particle states and those particles have mass physical mass m p and remember m p is not necessarily uh, the the mass parameter that appears in the Lagrangian. Okay, so MP will in general differ from those parameters, uh, the parameter M. But this is what you should show. Okay, now if if the theory were to be free, if it were a free theory, then phi will evolve according to Klein-Gordon equation. Okay. And this is exactly what you, that operator you have in klein gordon equation. So, that would vanish. So, del naught square phi minus gradient square plus mp square acting on free field would be 0 if phi uh, were a free field. But since we are looking at interacting theory, we find out that this object, this derivative of this object is not 0, right. So, this is not equal to uh, how should I write? Not, not equal to zero in an interacting theory. Okay, but this will be zero if theory was interacting, and in that case, of course, the physical mass m p would be same as the mass parameter in the free theory. So what we have seen is that del over del t of let us uh, make first a statement about this thing being uh, th this object belonging to free theory. So, in that case this was given a name a of p that was a p dagger this is equal to 0 right this is 0 for free theory. But del over del t of the same object is not 0 in interacting theory. So, I am going to uh, call this as a dagger p and I will put a subscript t because this does depend on time otherwise this derivative would have been 0. So, that is why I attach a, um, a subscript t and call it a dagger p with a subscript t and this is not equal to 0 in interacting theory. Okay. 
So that's the definition of this object and because in free theory this same object creates single particle states with definite momentum, we are interested in working with this. Okay, so what should we do? Let's do the following. First recall what we are after. So in free theory, we had A dagger P acting on vacuum that gave us a single particle state and the normalization was that you should multiply with this factor. Okay, that was for the normalization. Okay, now we have a t dagger p that is this object equivalent of this object in interacting theory and I want to hit on vacuum and want to get this which of course it is not going to come out but never, nevertheless let us proceed. So what I do is I take this and multiply this with an identity. Okay, replying identity does not change anything. Now, this identity is, um, is the following object. Okay, we have already seen this, so that is the vacuum, and then you have these states which carry single labels, single particle states, and then you have, um, of course, there is a sum over all the k which really is an integral but for now I will not worry and then you have states which carry two labels okay and you should sum over k1 and k2 and then you have other states and a t dagger p omega ok I think my nib of my pen is almost gone ok so this is what we have which I will write in short as so instead of writing all these things I am going to uh, write in short as cat alpha bra alpha this, op this operator where alpha takes values omega k k1 k2 like this ok. Where Okay. Now I will um, look at the yeah. Now this is what this is minus i. See what I'm doing is now I'm substituting this um, this this expression a dagger of p subscript t is this object okay so d cube x f p and then time derivative acting on on phi so when i substitute that here i get minus i integral d cube x and we have f p t then you have a um, del over del naught or del over del t same thing let us write I will put t instead of 0 ok ok 
and then we have phi and then finally omega is that fine alpha phi omega that is that is correct so here this is this is this object then you have bra omega that's here and a dagger contains uh, d cube x f and this double derivative uh, sorry this derivative uh, acting on both sides on phi okay so that is what it is here see the, these alphas do not contain any t they do not depend on time the, you are working in heisenberg picture okay so states uh, do not evolve with time so there is no time dependence in here so this del uh, this time derivative is going to act only in on f and phi okay so um, the time dependence of phi is um, not very complicated it's easy to pull out and that we can do using the following relation so phi tx you remember that it's this okay where p is the momentum operator of that theory so with this if you want to calculate this object phi tx this then because this is what is there in your expression alpha phi omega where alpha and omega they are both independent of time because you are working in heisenberg picture so you have alpha phi omega is equal to alpha e to the i momentum operator p dot x phi at the origin e to the minus i p dot x and you have omega here okay so let's look at first this part so you have phi zero i'm going to write this a little while later um, this when x on see this is exponential right you can expand in in the series and each term will act on omega and omega is an eigenstate of the momentum operator with value zero okay um, uh, the the vacuum does not have any momentum it has momentum zero so each of that of the terms will give you zero meaning the exponential will have e to the minus i zero which is one so this gives you omega okay why because p of omega um, is equal to zero okay now let's look at this part this will give you alpha e to the i p small p okay because now it's not operator it's I'm writing what you get when this operator acts on alpha e to i p alpha dot x. Okay. This is not an operator. That's uh, just the eigenvalues. So that I can pull out and get e to the i. Let me expand it. Sorry, uh, no, I just realized here i should have written not okay so this is a mistake because you have both t and x right i'm i'm this this is for momentum operator because i have um put t and x both equal to zero here so what phi of zero is this is phi of zero comma zero like this one and these were meant to be four operator uh, for momenta and for position vector so this is all ugly uh, this should be removed this should also be removed gone gone so you have e to the mind e to the i p alpha dot x that is omega alpha that's the energy of the state alpha t minus p alpha three momentum 
dot x okay i've just expanded times alpha phi of 0 omega okay good so now i have pulled out the out the time dependence here explicitly and these are of course some matrix elements which are left but then i can act with this time derivative operator on the time dependence contained in here okay so let's do that so what i find is uh, what do i find so we substitute this in this result in this equation let's call it 2 so substitute and let's call it 3 so substituting 3 into we get what do we get we get we get the following so uh, okay i will that's simple so i will leave it as an exercise that you show that a dagger t p omega that's an exercise you should do fairly easy minus i integral d cube x 1 over 2 pi 3 halves 2 omega p e to the i p dot x that is the p here okay that's the p which is coming from the argument of a dagger of t minus i p alpha dot x and where that p alpha is coming from this alpha okay these are the momenta of all these states okay then times i omega alpha plus omega p e to the minus i omega alpha minus omega p t times summation over all the alpha phi 0 omega okay that's what you should be able to show now again um, you can do the the x integral because x dependence is fairly simple it's only uh, sitting in the exponents uh, in the exponential and that will give you a Dirac delta function okay so you end up with finally the following remember this is what uh, we have been looking for a dagger on vacuum that created single particle state in free theory now we are what we see is that we get the following we get apart from some factors which are these Okay, these are not the real meaty things in on uh, which we want to worry about but nevertheless we should carry them this is important so delta q p minus p alpha okay i should there is a summation over alpha and then you have within that summation uh, i omega alpha plus omega p e to the minus i omega alpha minus omega p t um, no that I have already written here then you have phi 0 omega ok let us see this do not worry about all these all these factors. So, what we have eventually is there is a summation over all alpha and then you have some some factors some functions and then here is the real thing forget about this also 
okay that's some some factor you have this object which you in free theory which gave to you a single particle state now the same thing or the equivalent of the same thing in the case of interacting theory is giving you a sum of uh, states uh, is giving a sum over all possible states so it's so uh, for example alpha takes alpha is uh, alpha takes get alpha takes such values right it becomes it is omega then it is also uh, this then it is also okay there is sum over all of these so what we were searching is that this acting on omega will give you only this only pick out this as in the case of free theory that's what we want to do okay we want to create a single particle state but what we see here is that we in instead get a sum over uh, all possible states which is sum over vacuum and then single particle states then states which have interpretation of two particle states in the far past sum of states which has interpretation of three particles in the far past and so forth so it did not give you what you wanted but that's not surprising okay so let's look at first the first add the contribution coming from vacuum now contribution coming from vacuum when alpha takes the value omega or ket alpha is ket omega that is simple that does not contribute because you see p alpha is zero when alpha uh, so for vacuum that is when this is ket omega p omega is zero right so here you have zero and p is completely arbitrary this is a dagger p acting on omega where p you have uh, is completely arbitrary it's in your hands you choose okay so then if this is this p is arbitrary then this delta function is not going to give you anything it's going to vanish because an arbitrary p minus zero that doesn't hit the delta function doesn't hit so this delta function vanishes so it gives you a zero contribution okay so you get zero contribution from ket omega which means your alpha, uh, alpha runs not over this but only over these these and the remaining ones okay so this looks bad that we didn't get only single particle states but remember we should also not expect this what we should expect is that we should get single particle states in the far past okay there it should work it, there is no requirement that they should help us at any time t but only at t going to minus infinity okay and what we are going to see in the next video is um, apart from other things how to pick out uh, what limit you should take that this only picks out single particle states get k and not others okay and that will not be difficult and it will be a repetition of what we have done already in the uh, first course okay where we did things like um, limit where we took t going to where capital T goes to infinity okay things like this because you see there is an exponential here and I can play with that exponential and create a damping okay a damping term so that it picks out only the relevant things but I will show you in detail how it works and once I have done that we would have created a single particle state in interacting theory meaning we would have found the right operator which creates single particle states and then once we have done that creating states with more uh, than one particle will not be difficult. Okay, so see you in the next video.